Uh, we gave it a pretty big name, this talk today. We are going to wake in the dormant energy giant. And I've invited a very illustrious crew here to show you how it's done. I've actually asked Guillermo Sierra from Neighbors, one of the la large world's oil and gas companies uh, out of Houston, to join us to Zurich. <laughs> Not um, a producer, a driller. A driller, that's true. <laughs> Service provider. Um, so I asked him to join us, to come a bit of to the lion's den, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and speak at such a conference because um, while you might still perceive him as part of the problem, he will also be part of the solution. Um, solution driven is Igor Kochis, founder and CEO of GIA Drilling, and Ingmar from We Don't Have Time. We, he's here to ask some critical questions because I think there are a lot of pressing questions on how we're actually going to solve this problem here. Um, I'll go next here. There we go. This is, this is the actual problem. Yeah, this is the, the stack, this is the emissions um, by, by, by sector. And we can quite clearly see that energy is by far our biggest problem in terms of emissions. And the question is, what answers do we have? We all know that there are some answers that we as investors invest in these answers, but what else is out there? So, Guillermo, from Houston, we have a problem we would like to hear. There's from solution. Houston, we have a solution. Listen, guys, um, you know, the world runs on 20 terawatts of power. Uh, 25 years ago, it was 10, and 25 years before, it was 5, and in 20 years, 25 years, it's probably going to be 40 or 50. Solar, wind, and nuclear combined today provide 2 uh, terawatts out of the 20. The fossil fuel industry provides the other 18. By definition, traditional energy companies in the complex that we've created around the world understands energy in scale, and we can be part of that bridge. And we're using our skill sets, our tools, our engineering capacity, our technology, and the, the capabilities to deploy that technology in scale across the world to help figure out what, which are solutions that we think can be game-changing in this space. For us, uh, in particular, who are a driller, one of the things that is most tangential to our business that we are most excited about simply because uh, it provides clean, renewable, and base load power, meaning it doesn't, it, it's, it's on all the time, regardless of the sun being out or the wind blowing, is geothermal energy. Uh, we're sitting on, you know, a massive nuclear fusion reactor down there that can potentially power humanity for two million years. And all we need to do is poke a hole. We're really good at poking holes for resources, right? Um, and so, to some extent, repurposing who we are uh, and finding out and supporting technologies of the future that can help us harness that power efficiently, effectively, and competitively to the alternative could be an absolute game changer. Um, so one, one of the I very interesting companies we're spending a lot of time thinking about is my friend here, Igor, uh, who, the who question you is hopefully hear from him uh, some of the most exciting things that, that he's doing and, and, and where we can actually work together and things that we do together. So Guillermo, the question is, why are you not doing it today? <laughs> <laughs> well, drilling is actually quite hard. And so historically, geothermal power has been, um, has been kind of really balanced around, uh, geographically constrained around areas that are hot very close to the surface. We've gotten really good at knowing sort of surface conditions and understanding how to drill deeper, but we haven't gotten deep enough. We haven't really figured out how to use that power to harness anything other than oil and gas. If you look at a geothermal well today, it looks the same as 10 years ago, right? But very excitingly, in the last 18 months, there have been more startups in the geothermal space than the 10 years prior. And that's just simply because people are figuring out, wait a minute, we actually know how to do this, guys. And there's a lot of power down there. Let, in, it, some of the technologies are nascent, um, just like, like Igor, you'll hear from him today. How do we actually change the paradigm? How do we actually go deeper? How do we actually harness that power? So, Igor. Igor, tell us. Yep. Right point, because uh, we are in this business for some years, and uh, today is absolutely a unique opportunity to utilize this transition to the from the, let's say, old industry into the new industry. And the main point, uh, what is, in the geothermal as a, as a showstopper is a scalability. Today you can see it in Iceland, in some Indonesia, sitting on volcanoes, but 95% of the world is, is not there. And uh, to be able to do that, you have to make the step change in a technology, because it's exactly as you said, is, uh, is here, is also here, down, but <coughs> we are not able to access it in a way that it will be economically feasible. So that's why we are focusing for the last few years very strongly to develop the system and the tool for these guys that have thousands of people in the field and they are able to operate and uh, to deploy it on a global scale very quickly. The right set of the tools 
or the special new technology that is enabling this drilling into the depth. Because today, geothermal, what is the problem, is 100% dependent on the technologies that were developed for something else. It was drilling in the sediments for fossil okay. fuels. Right. And uh, there was not significant investments, effort, to develop something that can go deeper through the hard rocks. Because everywhere, uh, here in Switzerland definitely, we have hard rocks almost since the uh, beginning. And to drill through that is not enough to have a mechanical tool because uh, they are getting to some, let's say, uh, limit of the uh, rate of penetration, speed, and the cost of drilling. So our approach is to bring the new tool that is able to combine it with some other high-tech uh, things that were developed in the uh, industry for the last 20 years, like uh, plasma, something very hot that we can also use the thermal shock into the rock to increase the rate of penetration and to be able to combine it with existing assets and to drill faster. And <coughs> the final point is to enable geothermal globally. So Ingmar, <coughs> how does it sound to you? Uh, what questions do you have? It sounds fantastic, of course, but uh, I mean, we're we're not really. We need to move faster. And uh, what what is so frustrating? What, what I li love with geothermal power is actually that you give the oil companies something to do, uh, because they can't. They don't know solar. They don't know uh, wind, but they do know how to drill. Uh, so we need to have them to do something else. And geothermal is really, really good for that. Uh, that's what I like most with the geothermal. But um, what I don't understand is why oil companies themselves not moving faster on this. And uh, what they should do is not just invest in the technology. They should turn their lobbying uh, to focus on geothermal. Uh, because instead of focusing on protecting business as usual. Because people don't know about geothermal. And if they sh choose to focus their lobbying money, we will see this happening so much faster. I could point. not agree more. Good uh, point. <laughs> I could not agree more. Frankly, we don't have any lo loving money at neighbors. Um, <laughs> uh, but to be fair, you're right. You know, we, we should recognize the fact that we have a global for workforce that understands how to do this, and the power is there. And that's one of the things, as you, you all know, we've, we've invested in three geothermal companies so far in that, that ecosystem. We expect and hope to grow beyond that because we, we want to provide these guys with the tools, the technology, the access, anything that you need. Failure is not an option for us on the space. It's just not an option. It's too much power down there. It's base load power, so it works all the time, and that's huge. We can reduce the, the need for storage on a utility scale, right? The, the mining implications of that are huge. It could be incredible for our economy, for our environment. Like, fa failure is not an option, not because we're trying to change our business. We, 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 we are trying to survive eventually, but the driver is simply, there is a lot of power. There's an investment opportunity there. We should be harnessing that power effectively and efficiently. Just to, close. to give an idea of scale, how many wells does the oil and gas industry drill today? <laughs> Probably 20,000 a year in Texas. In uh, Texas alone? Yeah. Globally? 100K? Millions. I mean, 100,000? A, a lot. Yeah, okay. A lot. 100K. Igor, can you give us an idea of scale? How many wells do we need to power our entire planet using geothermal? Uh, yeah, we made some calculations. Uh, of course, we are talking about deep wells uh, mm -hmm. because it's not enough yeah, to drill yeah. only in your garden uh, for some hundreds of meters. But uh, in this scale, uh, compared to 100,000 yearly that are drilled from the today's oil and gas industry, uh, we calculated that we need about 10 years to utilize just 20% of these uh, assets and capability to have the enough wells to deliver, I think, about more than 10% of the global energy. So it's a real story how you can leap. This is a quite interesting graph uh, to see that uh, we need to make a step change and to be able to deploy more than 10% of the global energy is fully in a today capability of the drilling industry. So Ingmar, last words on you. We don't have time to wait. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you.